Welcome to Session 8 of Complexity Explorer's basic tutorial, agent-based modeling and typing. In this session, we're going to add our sugar and spice step functions and walk through two different ways in which to iterate through your steps in order to run a model. So let's get started. First, open up your instance of Google Colab or your preferred development environment. All right, so uh, first, we'll show you another trick here on how to reference uh, files in this case in Google Colab. All right, so instead of having to upload it like we've done in the previous lessons, I'm actually just going to upload it to my local uh, to my Google Drive that uh, stored my account, uh, and then I'm just going to reference it locally in my Google Drive, which should make my life a little bit easier. All right, so from Google.colab, you get to import Drive, all right, and then you're going to mount your drive. So this is just, these are just Google Colab functions, all right? Uh, it's just drive.mount, open quotation marks, forward slash, content, forward slash, drive, and uh, quotation marks. All right, so now this way, my model can actually reference the files in my Google Drive. All right? We have our resource classes, our sugar and spice, our trader class that we've already built. Just going to make sure we're running these so our model will run. All right, so make sure you hit play uh, if you haven't already. All right, and then here we're actually uh, uh, read in my sugar dot map. We do content forward slash content forward slash drive and forward slash capital M for my and then capital D and drive forward slash sugar map dot txt. Okay, and you want to make sure your stuff, uh, all your classes are running, so you don't get an error. And then, because mounting, uh, referencing things from a code environment are always tricky, let's we'll make sure that it's all actually working. Okay, now that we've uh, updated that, if you get rid of this print statement from session seven, we're not going to need that where we uh, we're verif uh, verifying our traders. All right, and now we want to add our step functions into our sugar class. So a step function in Mesa is just Mesa convention uh, for you know what every agent should do for that particular step. All right? Some other terms for these might be called sticks, or ticks rather. Uh, in this case, Mesa made the choice uh, to use step functions, and so other classes of Mesa like time and data collector uh, will look for the step uh, function. All right? Now, as always, it's good uh, practice uh, to comment your code. Right? So our step function is really just the sugar growth function. Right? This is gonna add one unit of, sh of sugar uh, for each step, right, until we reach our max sugar, right, which we uh, parameter parameterized or we uh, established in the initiation of the model, right. So to do this, it's going to update our self dot amount attribute. Then we'll just use Python's primitive min function. We'll use open brackets for a list, and then whichever smaller between uh, self dot max underscore sugar, right, and the current amount of sugar, so be comma, right, self dot amount uh, plus one. So really I have a list of two things, my max sugar and my self dot amount plus one, and whichever one's smaller, right, uh, that's what I'm going to update my amount to, right? So this is just a one line way to make sure that my, uh, the amount of sugar I have is updating uh, once per uh, time step in my simulation. All right, um, and then just to make sure, right, go to little test a little. Next thing I do is we'll write a print statement, unique ID, just so I can tell the different agents. All right, self dot amount, and then self dot max sugar. Now, since nothing's consuming um, the sugar at the grid space, uh, those two numbers should be the same. All right, so we expect to see uh, agent ID, so an integer, and then the same number uh, for the amount and max sugar. And now that we've added it to our sugar class, what we need to do uh, is add a step function uh, uh, into our model class that will call all the agent step functions. Now it's important to make sure that your uh, function is aligned to the outermost uh, function, so one tab over, all right, so be aligned to the def dot in it. Or the initialization function, right? um, and then 
we're just going to iterate through uh, our uh, sugar agents all right, uh, in order to call their step function. Now, uh, in this case, as was kind of discussed in session two, we're using a, a very kind of unique activation function, right? So Mesa has staged and it has random activation. All right, uh, but it doesn't have a combination of the two. So really we're doing a stage activation of sugar, spice, but then for our traders, right, we want to randomly activate them uh, so each trader uh, uh, doesn't have like a first or second mover advantage, right, uh, as we're iterating through our traders and as they're trading, right? So it's a pretty unique activation function, and the good thing, right, about coding in Python and having Mesa being kind of Python all the way down, so to speak, right, uh, is that uh, we can we can do this fair, fairly simply, right? So I make our step function, right? And all that's going to do is call our sugar step function, right? So um, we iterate, right? So we just got a for loop that goes through all our sugar agents. Then we call our sugar step, run that to make sure it's stored in memory. Then we run our model, and nothing happens. Why is that? Well, because the step function isn't called. All right, um, and so to call the step function. Right, uh, it's just another iterator uh, for a range, uh, for some range, right? So in this case, we'll just do five steps, right? And then uh, since we instantiate the model class, now just like we call the sugar step function, now we call the model step function right, and run that. Okay, right? so calls the sugar step function at the bottom, so to speak, then the model step function, then we run it, and sure enough, uh, we're getting what we're going to expect, which is a unique ID uh, plus a amount of the max amount of sugar and the amount, which is the same thing, right? And I'll run through uh, five iterations, all right, uh, for that. Okay. So now um, we do have to account for something. So again, we're running this kind of unique activation function, which isn't um, uh, this organic to Mesa, all right, um, and so. We want to make sure uh, uh, that we're actually advancing uh, our scheduler inside our core Mesa, right? So if you go to uh, time.py in the Mesa file, you'll see that there's step and there's time. So there's two ways that Mesa can account for time. Uh, step is kind of the primary, and then time allows you to run a continu continuous clock. These are then both attributes of the base scheduler. All right, so that uh, is actually not advancing because we're not using the kind of uh, traditional uh, schedule dot, dot, dot step function that uh, Mesa expects to see, right? So a typical Mesa model would say self dot schedule dot step, right? And then the time dot pi file uh, would advance that, uh, would advance step and time for you, all right? Uh, but since we're not calling that function because we're doing this unique stage activation plus a random activation, Right, uh, that doesn't advance. So to see that, we just do a print dot self dot schedule dot steps, right, and then self dot schedule dot time, and you'll see that nothing's happening. And this is important because data collector looks at steps as well, right? And so later on, when we're doing data collection, uh, if we don't advance the steps, all events will occur at step zero, which will be problematic. I say run it. All right, see that we get uh, zero, uh, zero um, steps for the the five, um, the five iterations we go through. All right, so it's fairly easy to fix. We just we go reference uh, Mesa's uh, steps dot attribute and then add one. We'll add a note here because it's unique. Just saying uh, uh, it's important for data collector uh, to track the number of steps. Uh, and then we can run it again. So I got good comments here. All right. Uh, you notice we didn't touch time. All right. You see steps advanced and time did not. All right. Because um, we're not going to need time for data collection, uh, we're just going to let that remain at zero. Uh, that's for more advanced models when you might be running a continuous clock uh, uh, as well. All right. For the purposes of this model, though, uh, we could just uh, worry about steps. Right, so now that we've advanced our sugar, uh, now we got to do the same thing for spice, right? So for spice in self that schedule that 
agents uh, by type, right? And then we'll do uh, spice with a capital S because uh, we're referencing the uh, agent class, right? And then values because it's just uh, stored in a dictionary. Our dictionary with spice is the key and a list of spice objects uh, um, as the value. And then we call spice.step. Right, just like in sugar. Right, and then so now we go up to our spice agent. All right, and we're going to do the exact same thing we did here. Right, which is we create a step function. Right, sure, it's a tab over one. Right, right it's going to be called step again. Right, so that way uh, the scheduler knows what to, is looking for steps. So I make sure it's all the same thing. Right. And then we we'll put our comments. Spice growth, uh, spice growth function adds one unit of spice each step until maximized. Uh, and since the spice or sugar agents don't consume each other, right, it doesn't matter uh, that they're all kind of run in, in sequence, right? The order for that doesn't matter, right? Well, with traders, they might get first mover advantage or something depending on when they move, right? And then we'll just use the same kind of one line uh, function to update uh, or the amount of spice at that particular grid square. So we got max spice, then we have a min of a list of self dot max spice and self dot about uh, plus one. All right, so again, we want to use our print statement. Just to validate that what we think is happening is in fact actually happening in our model. So just like uh, sugar, we'll do self dot unique ID, self max spice, and then self dot amount. And what we expect to see is that those are the same because nothing is consuming the spice uh, at this point. Okay. Um, so then we run it. Make sure we update that class uh, and we get an error all right uh, so if we follow our trace back we can see that we did for spice or I wrote for spice itself that activation by types versus type all right which does not exist all right we can see that in our trace back we run it again all right and we get a bunch of unique IDs plus the same amount of uh, max spice and uh, amount of spice at that location and again, this will theoretically run uh, for, or will actually run for five steps, right? So uh, now we have our uh, step functions for sugar and spice, uh, and our step function for our model, right? So as always, make sure we have good comments. So again, just to emphasize this point, this is a unique uh, step function that combines uh, stage activation uh, plus uh, uh, stage activation of the agent, so sugar, spice, and the traders, and then for each of the traders, right, uh, it's going to randomize them every time we call it, and, and that will be uh, in a couple of the next lessons. All right. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna, but we gotta make sure that people understand that, or at least have some inkling of it. So a unique step function that does staged activation of sugar and spice. And then randomly activates traders. Let's comment this here. Right. So uh, step our sugar agents. Then we'll uh, step our spice agents. Again, because the sugar and spice don't interact with each other, uh, uh, we could just do those sequentially and it will have no impact on the model. So now we've got the first two uh, uh, stages of our, our um, schedule, which of our stage activation, which is sugar and then spice. Right. And then we're making sure that we iterate through. All right, so now uh, there's one other thing is we kind of did this for I and range here. But typically, uh, we could store that inside uh, our model with a function. Right. So we're going to do def uh, run model, 
right? And then it'll be uh, start that out with self, uh, as always. Uh, I kind of did this a little bit backwards here. Instead of uh, <laughs> model run underscore run, uh, typical convention would be uh, run model, right? So run underscore model. Okay, then since it's inside a class, we're going to use the standard Python convention of self, right? And then we'll use a keyword argument again, again called step underscore count, all right? And we'll default that to a thousand steps, uh, which is kind of the, what we see in growing artificial societies, all right? And then we'll just take that same for uh, loop we did previously, all right? And we'll put it inside uh, this model, or correction, this uh, function. All right, be so for i in range step count this time, and then we just call uh, self that step because we're inside the function, right? And that will call uh, the function uh, our step function for the model, right? So we just got layers of step functions, each of our agents. All right, gets a step function, so sugar and spice. All right, we can get rid of this print statement now, so we valid verified that that's working uh, the way we think. All right, and then we have our show. Our sugar has a step function. Our spice has a step function. All right, and then we can run our model. So get rid of this for loop. All right, and then all right, we actually have to call it, right? So we instantiate a version of our model, or uh, an instance of our model rather, and then we're just going to call that function run underscore model. Since uh, running it a thousand times, we kind of silly right now. We actually use a keyword argument. Uh, and we're going to set it at 5 in it. Okay. So, and then we want to make sure it's doing a think. So, we'll do a print statement here. And we'll run it. Right, you can see it iterates through 0 through 4. Uh, so, we now have uh, the ability to run our model completely encapsulated inside our model function. Right, so now I have a run model function. And then once we instantiate an instance of that model, we can run it. All right, that concludes session eight, all right, uh, of our sugar and spice step functions. And then for session nine, uh, we'll start with uh, our traders and start having them take some action uh, beginning with them. So thank you for joining, and we'll see you next time.